Each of these devotees wants to show us something different. Shrotri, being one of the Pandavas, is on a higher level of bhakti than Pallad Maharaj because their worshipable deity is Lord Dwarkadish, who is a more complete form of the Lord than Lord Nishimade. So the bhakti of Dwarkadi is higher. How is it that she prayed and Pallad didn't pray? We have that verse that uh, Sri Padramadar Maharaj quoted the last line, Anukulena Krishna Anusilanam. Anusilanam means perpetually engaged for the glorification, pleasure, welfare of Krishna. Perpetually, just like a stream of honey falling from a jar, is not broken at any time. So their desire to please Krishna is not broken even at the time when there's danger. So how is that apparent contradiction there? Even when Draupadi prayed to Krishna to save her, this was for the glorification of Krishna. Krishna showed he was in Hastinapur, she was in Dwarka, and she was praying in Hastinapur, and she was trying to protect herself, and at the same time praying to Krishna. So Krishna was running around his palace, and his queen said, where are you running around in circles? He said, well, my devotee, Dropadi, is praying to me. And he said, why don't you go? So he said, she's not fully surrendered yet. And then as soon as she lifted both arms and prayed, if you like, you can save me. Then even without his shoes, he ran because she had full dependence. So it's not that Dropadi has any less bhakti. She did it for Krishna's glorification. That's the only desire of all the devotees. Similarly, for Lai Maharaj, all of his activities are for the glorification of Krishna. And therefore, he didn't pray to Krishna, knowing that Krishna would protect him, having that full dependence. So why is it said that the bhakti of Lai Maharaj, who is in Prema Bhakti, He's situated in Prema Bhakti, he's a Mahabhagwa, and his, uh, his slokas, his verses of explanation of Krishna's glory are quoted by all great spiritual masters. In all of Srila Gurudev's uh, tours, in every single country, he has the devotees discuss the teachings of the Lord Maharaj to his father. He has them discuss the teachings of Pallad Maharaj to his friends, glorifying the worship of the pure devotee, explaining how even uh, by one's intelligence, even by the collective intelligence of others, without devotional service, one is simply engaged in the matter of chewing the chews. Pallad Maharaj is the one who explained that one should perfect his life by putting all over his body smearing his body with the dust from the lotus feet of pure devotees who are completely free from all desires. Even when Prahlad Maharaj grew up, still his glories are broadcast all over the world. We hear about the success of Bali Maharaj. That success of Bali Maharaj is there due to Prahlad Maharaj's love to the Lord. Therefore, the Lord showed mercy to Bali Maharaj. Even when Pallad Maharaj became a king, the Lord was so kind, showing the greatness of Pallad. Pallad Maharaj was the king, and it's the king's duty to establish uh, the principles of Varnashram, and to make sure that all the um, Varnas and Ashrams are performing their duties properly. A king should act like a king, a Brahmin should act like a Brahmin, and it's the king's duty to make sure of this. So once, he saw a Brahmin, but this Brahmin had weapons, so he challenged him. Are you a Brahmin or are you a Shishri? Make up your mind. You have to do one duty and do it properly. And if you don't follow my instructions and follow one particular Dharma, then I'm ready to challenge you to fight. So he had a fight with this who knows Brahmin or who knows Shatriya. And in the middle of this, 
he wasn't winning and this Brahmin or Chetri wasn't winning. And then he realized that nobody can defeat me in battle except the Lord. So he did some meditation in trance and understood that this must be my very Lord Nishingadev. And he saw there was a garland on this Lord Nishingadev, the garland that he himself had offered to his deity that morning. So he surrendered to the Lord, and the Lord said, No, you have actually defeated me. So Pulad Maharaj's glories are sung all over the universe. But what kind of bhakti, because as Sri Padamadar Maharaj is explaining, Anyabhi Lakita Sunyam Jnana Karmadi Anavitam. One's bhakti should not be covered by personal desires and by jnana or by karma. So, of course, some kind of jnana, he explained, must be there. I have to know that if I cross the street and a car is coming, I'll be killed. So jnana must be there, but it can't cover bhakti. So, the Lord Maharaj is a jnani bhakta. That means he has knowledge or awareness of the supremacy of Lord Nishimadev. He, in his uh, very, very famous prayer, um, Shravakirtan Shravanam Kirtan of Vishnu, Smaranam Padasevanam, he uttered the word Vishnu. He knew that Lord Nishimadev is Vishnu, and he's a worshipper of Lord Vishnu. And because of that, when Lord Nishimadev appeared to him, he didn't think that, well, perhaps my Lord is thirsty or sweaty from killing my father. Maybe I should wipe the perspiration off his face or offer him a drink of water. He didn't think like that because he knows my Lord is everywhere. He's all-pervading and he's all-powerful. Therefore, there's no hunger or thirst in him. There's no need for me to render personal service to him. He engaged in service of glorifying but no personal service. This is, this means that his bhakti was somewhat covered by jnan, not speculative jnan, not like a jnani that God is impersonal, but thinking that, or knowing that he's the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, his pure uh, uttama bhakti was covered by his knowledge that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And therefore, there are greater and greater Bhaktas like Uddhav and the Pandavas and ultimately beyond even Bhakti, beyond these Bhaktas is the residents of Vrindavan who are fully engaged in his personal service, not at all knowing that he's the Supreme Lord. Thank you. Gopralat Maharaji, Pure Bhakta, Bhaktiyani Bhakta. His bhakti is mixed with Aishwarya Jnana. Huh? So, whether he don't want any worldly desire, but Anukulle Nasya Sevanam, he thinks that my Supreme Lord is everywhere, very powerful, he is the father of the world, creator of the world. He never tired to no use of nurses. Oh, he never hungry, thirsty. So like Draupadi, he used to cook for Krishna. And Krishna used to take. So he some aspect of his time. So Pralad Maharaj is Siddha Bhakta. But Amrish Maharaj, not Siddha Bhakta, but he is superior in Bhakti. How you can breathe? You should understand the uh, gradation of Bhakti. So 
So in the discussion, the gradual progression of bhakti and its uh, stages of increasing purity, now we come to the uh, understanding of Ambarish Maharaj, who is a Shuddha Bhakta. He is actually following purely this verse that Srila Gurudev is having us uh, study. Anyapilashita Shunyam Jnana Karma Adhyana Vritam Anakul Yena Krishna Nushilanam Bhaktir Uttama. Sri Ambarish Maharaj, he was a great emperor thousands of years ago, living in Mathura. And the story is delineated of uh, the history of Ambarish Maharaj and Durvasa Rishi, how Durvasa Rishi uh, attempted to kill Ambarish Maharaj, we heard that described before, and the Sudarshan Chakra of Lord Narayan was sent to protect Ambarish Maharaj. So, Ambarish Maharaj, what was his standard of worship of Krishna? Actually, Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindrayor Vachamsi Vaikuntha Gunanu Varanane Ambarish Maharaj utilized every single one of his senses in the service of Krishna in a very practical way. He was constantly thinking of Krishna 24 hours daily. Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindrayor his mind was absorbed in the lotus feet of Krishna. Vasamsi Vaikuntha Gunana Varanane. His tongue was utilized in constantly glorifying and describing the activities of Krishna. And he was, all of his limbs of his body were also utilized. Sometimes he would be utilizing his feet to go traveling and walking on uh, pilgrimage to the holy places where Krishna performed his pastimes. Uh, sometimes he was utilizing his arms, even in cleansing the temple of Krishna, personally cleansing Krishna's temple, although he was a great emperor. He did not employ someone else to do this, because if you employ someone else to do the, the bhakti in your temple, uh, that does not mean that you are performing bhakti. So he personally did this worship of the Lord. His eyes were utilized in seeing the very beautiful deity forms of Krishna in the temple. His ears were utilized in hearing the glorification of the Lord. His nose was utilized in smelling the beautiful fragrance, sweet fragrance of the flowers and posi offered to the lotus feet of Krishna. So like this, all of his senses, his mind, his intelligence, everything was completely absorbed in Krishna 24 hours daily without any other ulterior motive. Only what has been described, Anakulnena Krishna Anushilana. <clears throat> 24 hours daily, under the guidance of his uh, Guru and Vaishnavas, he was constantly absorbed in serving Krishna for Krishna's pleasure and happiness. So Maharaj Ambarish, he was fully absorbed in Krishna. It is stated, Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor. Krishna was his worshipable Lord his Ishta day, and he was also living, where was he living? In Mathura, the eternal abode of Krishna, the transcendental holy dham of the Supreme Lord. So Ambarish Maharaj, he was protected by the Supreme Lord uh, when someone tried to attack him, and as was described, he was un unmoved by this. He was not disturbed, he was not fearful, because his whole consciousness his, all of his desires were completely merged with the will of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, if Krishna wants to kill me, I accept that. If Krishna wants to protect me, let it be. So this was Maharaj Ambarish's mood. And therefore, uh, when Srivastava Rishi came to see, finally, he, first of all, he approached for protection to Lord Brahma, then to Lord Shiva. Both of them told him, I cannot protect you. The Sudarshan Chakra is coming from Lord Narayan. You have to go there yourself. And then at that time, he finally went and uh, approached Lord Narayan directly. And what did Lord Narayan say to him? He said, uh, actually, my bhakta is my very heart and soul. And I am not independent of my bhakta. So, my bhakta is always absorbed in thinking of me. 
and I am completely absorbed in thinking of Him. In this way, uh, Lord Narayan told Zuvasarishi, you must go to the lotus feet of Maharaj Ambarish, and there you will have to fall at his feet and beg forgiveness. So this is what Zuvasarishi did. He came there, traveling back again, and fell at the lotus feet of Ambarish. Ambarish Maharaj, during the time that Zuvasarishi was uh, traveling throughout the universe, Ambarish Maharaj did not even break his fast, his fast. Uh, of Ekadasi, and he stayed put in that same place, and constantly he was praying to the, to the Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord. And it is, was because of this reason that the Sudarshan Chakra did not finally kill Dravasarishi. So when Dravasarishi came and fell at the lotus feet of Ambarish Maharaj, <coughs> then Ambarish Maharaj prayed directly to Sudarshan Chakra, and he was appeased, and then he left that place. And then, Oh, Zervasarishi, uh, he was so deeply moved by witnessing this great uh, quality of the pure devotee. Uh, he said, Oho Ananta Dasa Anam, now I have seen today with my very own eyes the greatness of the servants of the Supreme Lord, who is known as Ananta, the Supreme Unlimited Lord. Now I have seen that even though I wanted to kill him, he only wanted my benefit. So Maharaj Ambarish was glorified in this way by Dravasarishi and uh, this story in Srimad Bhagavatam is showing us the superior position of Ambarish Maharaj even to that of Pallad Maharaj. Although Pallad Maharaj is a Siddha, he's a perfected personality, he has uh, fully realized the Supreme Lord and he was protected directly by Lord Nishimbadev. Lord Nishimbadev personally appeared to protect him. So he is not a sadhaka who is only practicing to attain perfection, but he has actually attained that stage. Uh, but, uh, but Ambarish Maharaj, still he is in the level of sadhaka, that he is performing sadhana. Sadhana means spiritual practices to attain uh, perfection, siddha. But yet, Ambarish Maharaj's position is considered superior to that of Pallad Maharaj. Why? Because as has been described, Pallad Maharaj had some mixture of jnana, knowledge about the Supreme Lord. That knowledge is not uh, a covering of his bhakti, as has been described, jnana karma dhyanabhatam. The knowledge did not cover his bhakti because he was not on the material level. He was pure, pure and transcendental, no material desires, only desires to please the Supreme Lord. But his conception of the Supreme Lord and how to please him and how to serve him was not as high as that of Ambrish Maharaj because he had Jan Mishra. He realized the uh, Supreme uh, Aishwarya of the Supreme Lord that he is everywhere he knows everything, he is eternal, he, his, he not, has no material body, he does not need to eat, to drink, or anything, he has no material needs. And in this way, being absorbed in this transcendental uh, knowledge of the Supreme Lord, his bhakti was somewhat weakened by this knowledge, therefore he did not perform any personal services to the Lord. Like we hear about Ambarish Maharaj personally serving the deity form of the Lord in the temple and do, using all of his senses to do so many services. So that's why Ambarish Maharaj is considered superior position to Pallad Maharaj because of, uh, of the type of bhakti that he was performing. It is more intimate and it is directed towards Krishna in Braja in Vrindavan. His Ishtadev is of, also of a superior position to that of Pallad Maharaj who is worshipping Vaikuntha Narayan. So like this, Srila Gurudev is explaining to us that we must understand the gradations of bhakti. First we have to understand what is Uttam Bhakti, the, the, the definition of that which we have studied today in so many different ways, so many speakers have described uh, all the details of that verse written by Rupa Goswami, we must understand because if we do not perform Uttam Bhakti, pure bhakti, then we will not receive the results. Only by Uttam Bhakti, as it is stated, Srila Gurudev stated in the, the first verse that he quoted today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Savai Pungsan Paro Dharma, 
जिसमें वकील अध्यक्ष थे और हर सुखी अप्रतिहता ये आत्मा संप्रसिद्ध थी आत्मा संप्रसिद्ध थी मीन्स दैट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड द सुप्रीम परमात्मा ही विल बी कंप्लीटली सेटिस्फाइड ओनली व्हेन कृष्ण इज कंप्लीटली सेटिस्फाइड बाय वन भक्ति कैन इट बी कंसीडर्ड उत्तम भक्ति हाथ मोस्ट प्योर भक्ति सो इन दिस वे बाय स्टडिंग द ग्रेडेशंस ऑफ भक्तस and understanding their corresponding levels and qualities and services and moods then we can understand this differentiation and then when we study as gurudev is leading us ultimately to to understand the highest bhakti of the vishvasis who have completely no knowledge that krishna is the supreme lord they love him only as their dear most friend their dear most child their dear most beloved and in this way their bhakti is the very very topmost type of uttam bhakti so in this way by the mercy of shri guru dev and by the mercy of all of our vaishnava charges especially shri sanatan goswami who all of this discussion is based upon his brihat bhagavatam nitam which shri guru dev has lectured on many many times in his tours we begin to understand this process of attaining shuddha bhakti pure bhakti vamsi bhakti goswami Now we will be ready uh, from our place. But you should just stand up and you should re- do the creation by your life. Uh, oh, I told you yesterday that you should be ready. At the present tomorrow. Oh, so just to see. मंजरी इज हियर मंजरी करिंग मंजरी मंजरी शुड कम हियर राइट हरी हरी दीपाले जन मगवाई
Drama play should start immediately. Just before we start the play, I'd like to say, we'd like to welcome all the devotees from all over the world. They come from South America, Mexico, all over the United States, all over Europe, Russia. And we've assembled for one reason, and that is to celebrate the appearance of our beloved Guru Day. Can I get a Jai Guru Day? Can I get a Jai Guru Day? This is the most blessed event. Without this day, where would we be? This morning, Guru Samarani gave a beautiful class, followed by Dhammadar's class. Tomorrow, Pujapad, Madhav Maharaj will be giving a class at 7 a.m. and you will have a very special message from Guru Day. We want all to come. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So they can do it at 7 a.m. Alright, you go. Where the supreme personality of Godhead in his original threefold only form of Krishna, Varsham Sita, eternally engages in loving pastimes with his most intimate devotion. Krishna also presides over the right wing of God, but not in his original form. He expands himself into his four armed form, known as the lion or vision. Thus, he presides over all the life of science. Once, on one of these blissful life of science, two gatekeepers of all the lion, known as Jai and Jija, were hungry. How they could better serve the Lord. Like is the Lord, only a very confidential devotee of the Lord. Who's 
course, that's all right. Then grant me this, that I may not be killed by a man or beast. That's all right. Then grant me this, that I may not be killed by any weapon. Of course, that's all right. Grant me this. I want sole dominion over all living entities and their presiding deities. And I want all the glory that come from this position. Furthermore, I want all this power for these to not be lost at any time. All the questions. These benedictions that you ask for are impossible to be had by most every man. My dear son, I have a question for you. Right now, you will be the one. I'm going to grant you your boon. I'm going to fulfill your wish. Right now. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ha, 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 ha. Now I'm immortal! I'm immortal! Death, close your portal! For I, I hear a new attack And now everyone worships me! <laughs> Although the line of her eyes was born, it is the enemy of the sword. 